explain Font Detective. I travel to different places and get inspiration um, from fonts that I see out in the wild. Uh, I took a day trip to Vail recently and I found all these cool, um, you know, fun fonts that I wanted to figure out what they were. Fun fonts to figure out. Um, I came back here. Um, I use a little bit of my own knowledge mixed with um, screenshots of, from font finders on my fonts, font squirrel, and what the font and what font is. Um, and through all of that, I can pretty much find the font or get close to it. Um, good designers will usually take um, fonts uh, as a starting point, um, and then and then mess with them and make them unique for brands. Um, let's go through a few of these real quick. Um, so this was a restaurant font. I think I actually found the font specifically, Hermia and uh, Victorian Standard. Pretty straightforward. These are very unique fonts. Um, um, definitely kind of like a medieval um, calligraphic uh, inspiration for Lancelot and for restaurant I was looking at um, Art Nouveau uh, a little bit. Um, I think ultimately the font finders helped me with that one. I was very surprised with uh, these hotels that have these very like German or uh, Alp, uh, like European Alps uh, feel and uh, both of the fonts ended up being like uh, named Old English um, and very close to each other hotels that are very close to each other with fonts, with font names that are very close to each other. Uh, so the red lion here had engravers Old English pretty close to it, uh, hand painted, which is really cool. And again, with host Hotel Gasthof Gramshammer, um, the font was Old English. I had to look and make sure these weren't the same. Um, can't remember specifically. Let me see. It doesn't matter. They're, they're slightly different fonts, but it's, it's amazing that these ideas of these like uh, European Alps, uh, these like German Austrian uh, hotels um, have these old English fonts. I just thought it was very interesting. Um, this mountain plaza, can't remember exactly. I mean, they're such sharp uh, serifs and uh, ultimately found birch with this one. I was so excited for this one and it ultimately let me down. I wasn't able to find the lemonade font. Um, Fresh Squeezed was a university room and um, fairly easy to find, very distinct R um, and S and that Q. Um, lemonade I wasn't, I wasn't able to find completely. These are old wood, woodcut fonts. Um, the style is this Tuscan, Egyptian, Wild West, you know. Uh, um, font and I got close um, you know one font had had some elements another font had other elements I, I just settled on Tuscan Egyptian for this one because um, it, it, it at the very least it explains the font um, and here I was racking my brain I, I thought for sure um, that they were just squeezing you know going into uh, like Microsoft Office and squeezing and stretching these fonts and they were doing that um, this font Siesta N4, it works perfectly, but it seems so weird that someone would find a font so obscure and professional and then go and skew and pull and stretch it. Um, then I found Help Wanted and it was what I thought. It was Impact. Um, I didn't think it was Impact. It took me a long time to figure that out. Um, um, and when I did, I was, uh, <laughs> it was very difficult to take that I didn't see that it was impact right off. Um, I actually used Office to find this font. Um, and then for sure I thought, well, then this hot coffee chocolate apple cider must also be impact, but it isn't. Um, the E's are uh, way more uh, square uh, than the impact E's. So close yet so far away. I'm still not convinced that this is CS to N4. Um, but it worked, uh, so we'll go with it and impact. We'll, f we'll see impact here again, again shortly.
are so many Western fonts. Um, there's a font that's very close to this, just called Cowboy Western, Western Cowboy, Cowboy Western. Um, but P.L. Davidson Americana um, had almost everything I was looking for except for this apostrophe. And I'm not convinced that this apostrophe is from the same family. Um, I couldn't find a Wild West um, wood cut font um, uh, with these ornaments uh, with this um, uh, with this apostrophe. Um, these these ones gave me uh, a lot of difficulty, and ultimately I, I backed away. I got very close. We have these humanistic, um, old style uh, serifs, very sharp. I got close with Sinzel, Winzel. I got close with Trajan. I got close with Bembo. You know, all these humanistic serifs. Um, ultimately, nothing had um, the sharp serifs in the middle of the E or a cut P. I'm sure uh, it feels like they took a font like Wincel um, and then uh, kind of tweaked it and messed with it. Uh, but I wasn't able to find it uh, right off the bat. I, I didn't, if I found this, I would have gone further and found, I mean, it's funny again that these like German, Austrian, uh, Bavarian um, restaurants, uh, which I love this restaurant, by the way, um, uh, would have this, I really wanted to look for this like ballpark inspired like script font. Um, maybe I'll go back and find it soon. Um, but cause, because I struck out on the, on the main logo, I, I backed away. The Arabelle again, still, I, I got very close. Um, this is a transitional serif font. Um, you know, Times New Roman. Um, now I can't think of any, but I, I got very close. There was a font that had um, lines cut out of it, um, but ultimately couldn't find something this sharp uh, with the lines cut out. I can't remember the name right now. This one was Optima. I feel pretty confident that this is Optima um, for Veil Square, but the Arabelle. Um, I mean, there are so many transitional serif fonts out there, um, and I spent way too long looking and ultimately backed away because I couldn't find it. The, uh, the, the subtle elegance, uh, kind of soft curve of the R was tripping me up. The very sharp E's were tripping me up. Um, I got very close with a font like Garamond maybe, um, but its serifs extend above the top of the T's. And so again, they could have started, I feel like, you know, a good design starts from a place, but then for a brand, you need to, you need to make little unique pieces, um, you know, so that font nerds can't immediately identify <laughs> a font. It makes it unique. Um, We'll stop there. Um, and then uh, this one was again super fun. Um, it's cluttered. Let's 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 get all this stuff off of here. Um, but I love these uh, pictures with like tons of fonts on it. I knew that we were getting close to Helvetica or Arial when we started. The G. Uh, the, I ultimately settled on on a variation of Helvetica. Um, I probably used Helvetica new. Um, uh, in my in my identification um, the difference with Arial and Helvetica um, I am learning uh, the capital G um, uh, this this is a Helvetica G Arial I think doesn't have this uh, bottom ooh I can't remember the word descender I don't think that's the word but it doesn't have this little leg uh, at the at the bottom of the G here and so that was easy to identify and then um, how Ariel also has a much um, more diagonal uh, stress on the E here, and Helvetica is a lot more flat, so it was, it was easy to settle on something like Helvetica. Again, there are so many fonts that are very close to Helvetica, um, but Helvetica knew. It got us there. Um, and, and this one was exciting. Uh, I knew to immediately look for impact this time. 
and I feel like, uh, you know, impact uh, <laughs> kerned in ridiculously um, and added, you know, some stroke, some stroke to it. Uh, this is not readable at all. Um, maybe it's more readable, uh, more legible uh, when you're when you're there. Um, but when you're trying to make an impact, sometimes legibility is an issue. Uh, but you know, super fun, super fun to find. You know, to to, to work on this one. I could have gone further and tried to have some fun. You know, some fun in here. A little slab serif. I could have tried to have fun a little bit, uh, you know, with these, but... Oh, there's the Aramore again. Nope. No, not the Aramore. <laughs> the Arabelle. Uh, and I knew this one was going to be the most fun to work on. It was very easy to identify um, with a font finder. Uh, very sharp. Um, I can't call these... You know, what are these terminals, maybe? Uh, um, but just very sharp uh, uh, letters. Uh, Probably the quickest one to identify, and then um, the, the hyper focus ADHD in me couldn't mock this up without uh, pen tooling uh, these ornamentals. Um, this one was the most fun to work on, um, and I've seen it at, at multiple ski resorts. This this business, uh, but Americana again. You think these like. European, you know, everything at, at, at Vail specifically, very European, and we end up with like obviously Western cowboy, but Americana as a font or Old English as a font. Um, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. So that's Font Detective. I stream it a lot. Um, it's not this quick and straightforward. I spend hours um, fussing over the smallest details. Um, but ultimately it's fun. Um, I post these on social, um, will travel on Instagram. Um, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you tune in for an episode of Font Detective um, and help me help me figure this out. Let's you know let's work on these together. So thanks.